Alien Agenda, The Return of the Nephilim. We're talking about seed wars because the seed of the serpent, remember, they shall mix themselves with the seed of men. Something's going on that's corrupting the seed line. We see this in, in Cush, you begat in Nimrod. This is also in the Epic of Gilgamesh. If you don't know that, I would encourage you to go see that or to go read it. Nimrod is Gilgamesh, is Osiris, is Apollo. These guys are all the same. Names change throughout history. Why? Because we do that. It changes with the cultures. This is not a surprise. Gilgamesh was Nimrod. Gilgamesh is described as six fingers. He's holding a lion. This is a rather poor picture. I apologize. But I, want you, I wanted you to see that he's holding a lion. It's not a kitty cat. It's a lion. Gilgamesh was a giant with six fingers and six toes. Holding a lion like you would if you picked up your house cat. The Sumerian tablet of Gilgamesh, you see him here sitting on his throne, and you see these guys coming and approaching him. Was he a giant? The evidence is looking like he certainly was. Did you know they found the tomb of Gilgamesh? Archaeologists in Iraq believe that they have found the lost tomb of the king of Gilgamesh, which is an epic written about 2,500 years before the birth of Christ. This goes back a long time. So I'll let you read that on your own Gilgamesh tomb found. But they're finding things. Remember I told you about the convergence of evidence? Something's happening again that was happening back in Genesis 6. That's why I wanted to lay the foundation for you. That prophecy that was given in Daniel that the Nephilim will return, that they shall blend themselves with the seed of man and they shall not mix. Remember I was telling you about the chimeras? These guys are coming back. That's my personal opinion. As an archaeologist, I can't prove it. But I can tell you from ancient writings and history that I believe the Nephilim are coming back. And they're not here to help us. That's my personal opinion. There's something going on behind the scenes. And the tie is this, is that what they were doing back in those days, they're now doing again. But they're doing it a little different this time. How are they doing it? How are they blending themselves with the seed of men again? And not just men, animals. We know it as abduction experiences, etc. But they're taking people against their will for the most part, losing hours or days or even a week of time. Not because they want to go, because they are forced against their will to go. What's going on? Something's happening. They weren't doing it like they did back in those days. They're doing it a little different this time, but they're doing the same thing. Nothing new is under the sun, is it? They're taking the seed of humanity and blaming it with whatever, and I think they're creating another race of Nephilim. Can I prove it? Not necessarily, but there's enough evidence that we all know that leads to that because we know the testimonies of people who have say that they've had that happen to them. Something's going on. Transgenics, the return of the Nephilim. What does it all mean for us? If those guys are coming back, what does it mean? I think it means that something's coming down the pike that's not good. That's my opinion. But I don't think these guys are here to help us. I think they're here for an ulterior motive, and it's for them. It's not for us. Now, you may disagree, and that's okay. This is a big footprint that was found in the banks of the Pluxy River near Glen Rose. That's a 24-inch human track. Is it human, or is it Nephilim? That's a cast of that thing. That's huge, isn't it? We're talking about convergence of evidence. This is Alien Agenda, The Return of the Nephilim. This is the book I co-authored with Dr. McDaniel. And um, the, the book did well. We wanted to, to provide something new for you. And I thought it was very important to, to provide information that 
maybe you hadn't heard of before. I certainly hadn't heard of it before. And I wanted to converge the evidence for you to, to, to bridge the gap and hopefully provide answers that could help explain the UFO phenomenon. And see, I think these guys have been here, and they've been here for a long time. And I don't think they're here to help us. That's my opinion. But what's the alien agenda and the return of the Nephilim? These guys are coming back. And we write about it in the book. Alien agenda. This is uh, Chase and I at Tiwanako. I've, I've done a lot of work in these areas. I, I told you earlier I go to great lengths to bring you information. And I do. There's a handful of us out there doing that. See, I can't, nor do I want to be in, in the mainstream. I chose to be outside the mainstream because you can't get anything done. We do need academics. I'm not saying we don't. We do. But there's, there's areas of academics that refuse to investigate this phenomenon. They refuse to re investigate the Nephilim or the giants. They refuse to, to investigate what I call forbidden archaeology. They won't investigate certainly UFOs or any, anything associated. They just don't. They, they won't. So you have to be outside the box to do it. And I decided a long time ago that if you're going to do it, you have to go all the way. Because there's a point of no return. Because once you go, there's no going back. You, you are not going to be accepted. And I thought the truth was worth it. I thought bringing out the truth, whatever that truth led to, was worth it. See, I don't try to convince people of anything. I just want the evidence to speak for itself. I present the evidence, and I put it on the table, and I say, if all we do is discuss it, that's okay. We don't have to come to a conclusion. We don't have to say, this is it. We don't know for sure. I can say this is what the evidence is leading to. I can tell you that this is what we see in archaeology, and this is what we see in history. I can tell you my opinions, but don't trust my word for it. My opinions are basically worthless. Why do I say that? Because I want you to go out and research for yourself. Know for yourself. Don't take my word for it. I know what I believe because I believe it and it's convinced me. doesn't mean you have to believe it. Go do your own research. That's the point I'm wanting to make. You have to do your own research. And if all you do is listen to speakers and, and, and you read books, fine. I, I realize people can't travel the world and they don't want to write their own books. And writing a book is very tedious, by the way. It's, it's mind-numbing. Um, but the people who do are bringing you information. And that information is worth reading. And so I like to put information out on the table. Let's put it up for discussion, whether we agree or not. And most of my colleagues and scholars on the academia side do not agree. Now, there's a few that do, uh, but most of them will not. This film, Finding Noah, by the way, I have, I have not been their fan, nor do I want to be, but they will not take the time to go. They think it's a waste of time. Do you know King Herod's tomb? Before they found it, they said it never existed. You'll never find King Herod's tomb. They said the Hittites never existed. You're not going to find anything about the Hittites because there's nothing there. They never existed. Until they found evidence of the Hittites. When I was in Turkey, I went to the museum. And they got a great, uh, in Ankara, Turkey, the capital of Turkey, they got a great museum full of Hittite artifacts. That day, I went and knowing museums. When I go anywhere, I'm, I'm in a museum normally. <laughs> I thought, man, they're not going to let me lug my camera in there and take pictures. I'm not going to take this thing around and hold it all day. I'm, I decided to leave my camera. And I get in there, and they said, oh, you can take all the pictures you want. I left my camera. <laughs> I can't believe it. After all the times, you know, oh, yeah, you can take all the pictures you want. Hopefully my friend was with me and he had his camera. We got all the pictures. The point is, is this, is that the Hittites did exist. And yes, they found King Herod's tomb. They said they'd never do it. They'd never find it, and they did. What happened? Boom. About 2008, they found it. What happens if we find the ark? What does that mean? 
I'll leave that for you to decide. <laughs> See, what if it's there? My question to you is, what if? What if it's there? What does that mean? What does that mean about our history? That's L.A. Marzulli. We went down uh, to Peru, studying L.A., had me study these elongated skulls. Have, have you heard about the elongated skulls? Yeah, L.A. Marzulli had me and Chase Klesky, we were the, and some others, we were the first scientific team to scientifically study the elongated skulls. And L.A. asked me as an archaeologist to come down there and, and study four specific skulls. I did. Chase brought her uh, forensic um, uh, equipment. Let me tell you, without Chase, we wouldn't have got what we got done. I thank you, Chase. And she is a, a valuable asset to um, investigative research. And so we were able to do these studies on these skulls. My report's written in the... Um, in, in one of my books. Now, the Alien Agenda book that I brought is sold out. It's gone. It went out yesterday. No more copies. You can get it on Amazon or you can get it on my website, AaronJudkins.com, if you want a copy. If, the, if you want the Peru journal, I have three copies left of those. And in my, the back of those journals, I write my report about these skulls. Here's a, in, we're in the Changos here. This is the City of the Dead. It's about 17 acres. And here are these human skulls and bones are everywhere. Here's me holding an elongated skull. The question is, are these Nephilim? This was an um, a infant between 15 and 22 months old. And it's uh, uh, about 2,000 years old. We got to unwrap this. And this is on Watchers 8. If you've, seen, if you've not seen Watchers 8, you need to get Watchers 8. This is Senior 1 at the Paracas History Museum holding the skull. This is uh, Puma Punka, and uh, this is Machu Picchu, uh, director Brent Baum and Matthew Marsden from Black Hawk Down. Remember the guy with the cast? He's the producer of Finding Noah and director Brent Baum. There's uh, those guys interviewing me at Machu Picchu uh, for, for the film. This is the Peru Expedition Journal I was telling you about. I got three copies of these left. I hope I gave you some information that was new for you, or at least challenge you. I had a guy come up to me yesterday and he goes, I want to thank you because you're challenging what I believe. And I said, it's okay. I've been challenged too. We should be challenged. And my goal is to challenge you. My challenge to you is go see if these things are true for yourself. Um, don't take my word for it. I humbly put this before you in your hands and ask that you would look for these things. Will the Nephilim return at the time of the end? I think so. I think so. There are possibilities that they will be in the armies in the last days. Some say the Battle of Armageddon. I don't know. I know there's something going on. There's something coming. And we need to be prepared for it. Please remember Finding Noah. Go to FindingNoah.com. We have one showing on October 8th. This is a very well-produced film, and um, you'll see me uh, climbing that mountain. It's not an entertainment film. It's a documentary. You'll probably get some entertainment watching me climb that mountain. Uh, I got a pretty scruffy beard. I look a lot different in the film. But um, it was a, a really a joy and honor and a privilege to do that and to bring you this information not only in finding Noah, but in the return of the Nephilim. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Do your own research, people. Time is coming. My name is Jan Harzan. I'm the executive director for MUFON. We are a scientific research organization that basically collects sighting reports from the public and then goes and investigates them. Our mission statement as an organization is the scientific study of UFOs for the benefit of humanity. And we you have three primary angels. goals. You know we investigate what they are. UFO reports, we promote research into the UFO subject, and we educate the public on our findings. Okay, so, you know, all these, 
these people that have really looked into this stuff and found this stuff, they know that this is fallen angels. It's, uh, it's crazy. All right. Well, I hope that gave you guys some information.